Hey, David Hart here again. Welcome back to, uh, this will be lesson four. Um, what we want to do is do a little bit of revision. The first thing that I'm going to get you to do is have a look at your practice log and, and see whether or not you're, you've been practicing um, daily. Because what we're aiming for is to get you into the routine of practice. It's all about to, be, to become an accomplished guitar player. You need to really practice every day. And it's about getting in at least 10, 15, 20 minutes a day as a minimum, um, depending on your age. You know, for your younger kids, um, 10 minutes a day is fine. Um, for teenagers to adults, you really need to be doing 30 minutes a day. Day if you if you want to make it work otherwise it's not going to happen for you it's going the progress is going to be too slow and you're going to lose momentum and, and lose enthusiasm so let's start off the, the first thing I want you to do as with every lesson is to start off by doing some picking so let's just have a little bit of revise of the picking um, just doing the down up stroke down up that's it and every lesson do that remember to be to, to brace so you've got your hand in the right position there um, you can mute it you can open it up whatever suits you at this point it's just about getting used to the picking motion start off slow if anything I'm going fast you can do half this speed if you like and picking down up down up being conscious of every stroke and you can see that it's kind of like a flicking motion and following through so make sure you do this every single practice session. Picking is the most important thing. It's the, it, remember, it, 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 it's going to drive, it's the engine, if you like. It drives the whole, the whole operation. Without picking, without accurate picking, you're not going to be able to do much at all. Um, so really work on that picking every time. Work through the five different exercises. So that exercise there was the down up. The second exercise that you want to be doing is, is picking the, the outside picking. So going down on the sixth string and up on the fifth. Down on the sixth and up on the fifth. And then inside, so up on the sixth and down on the fifth. Up, down. And then down, down. So down on the sixth, down on the fifth. Down, down. And then on the last one, coming up, up, so, and you might find that one's pretty difficult at first, going up, up. It's, it's, it's going to be an awkward one because it's not one that you're going to use a lot, um, but it is one that, that needs to be incorporated. If you don't have the 20 picking exercises, grab a copy of that because you need that to, to work through all the possibilities that, um, that to really develop your picking, if you like. It's, it's, it's the essential part of it. Okay, so looking at the chords, um, you've, 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 you've learned some basic chords. Um, what you want to do now is try and extend those chords into not just the one finger chords, which are the C and the, the G7, the G. There's also the, well, the D7 chord, so let's just have a closer look at that. So you're going to put your first finger onto the second string there, and then put your second finger up onto the third string, and then put your third finger there onto the first string, and then you're going to play four strings. So you've got the open D string, down, going to play all, all four strings, the fourth, the third, the second, and the first. So I'll give you a real good close up of that. So you can see, I'll do it again, putting the first finger, second string, second finger on the third string, and the third finger on the first string. And remember to do the reverse order. So in other words, don't just go one, two, three. Once you've got that, if you manage to do that, then reverse it, go back three, two, one. Three, two, one. That's it. And then even go, start with your second finger, go two, one, three. Two, one, three. And with every new chord you learn, you want to be doing this action. You want to be going in different different sequences. So the idea is to get the chord so it's flat. You can see how I just go out with my fingers like that. And that's to, to the idea of that is to keep coming back to it, to know that I know the chord. If I come back and I can't get the, the chord so quickly, then I need more practice. I need to, to bring it in closer. And so if you, if you just do like that and then lift off, keeping the fingers the same, that's not making the new chord every time. So you really want to come in there and do three, two, one each time, three, two, one. All right, okay, so that's the, the D7 chord. Now, let's add 
a new chord, or, or, let's extend the chord if you like. In other words, let's have a look at the full C chord. So you're not just playing the one finger C, but you're playing the full C. Now the full C chord is going to be putting the second finger up there on the fourth string, up there, and the third finger up on to the fifth string, to there. Good. All right, again, one, two, three, get used to that, and then reverse it, three, two, one, three, two, one, it's until the chord is flat. One, two, three, three, two, one. That's what you're aiming for, okay? So we've got this. You, you, you're quite welcome to go and learn more chords, but don't try and learn too many chords at one time. Let, let's just get a couple of chords down, uh, and that way you'll be able to play a few songs, because you don't need that many chords. Um, you only need three, two, or even two chords will get you playing um, a lot of songs. Um, three will get you playing a lot more. Um, so try and get the chords right rather than trying to learn lots of chords initially. That's what's probably the most important thing at this point. Okay. Um, also remember with your chords to make sure that every note is coming out clearly. Okay. Um, arpeggios, same thing when you've, you've got a new chord there. The idea with the arpeggio is just to practice the notes in the chord. So you're playing each note one at a time. And you can just go, in this case, with the C, we've got five strings that we play on the C. So we can go one, two, three, four, and then come to the first string and come back up. One, two, three, four. So you've got that. And that helps you to, that gives you something a little bit different because you, you want to use the arpeggios because it really colors your chords. It gives everything. If I'm just str strumming when I play song, then it gives it more color. You can hear, um, there's so many songs um, and a few which you'll learn. By using the arpeggios, then we, we get a lot more color in those chords. Um, they take longer to learn, a little bit more difficult than just strumming chords, but it's gonna give you a lot more, um, uh, kind of make it a lot more interesting for you. Um, scale, um, at the moment we've just introduced that to G to G scale. We're going to learn eventually the C scale. I'm just gonna show you today. We're not gonna start on it, but I'm just gonna show you. So the C, C scale starts on the C note. It's based around the C chord. And that's how it sounds. And we'll go backwards as well on it. So descending, ascending, and descending. But we, like I said, we won't do that just yet. Just showing you. This is the introduction, by the way. The first five lessons are all about introducing what's going on more so than uh, <clears throat> getting into the method. What we do after we've done this is we, we're going to move on to a, the first checklist. And the first checklist will get you started on the kind of things um, that will give you clear goals and we'll work through that checklist because it takes time to learn guitar and it's all about getting it right at the beginning. Don't be in a rush. If you're in a rush, um, you, you're going to really compromise your technique and you, you, you want to get everything in place before you start trying to get too fancy. Okay. Um, rhythm, remember the, the rhythm exercises, make sure that you can do those, those the, the first four for, for juniors, for, for senior students, you should be able to do the whole lesson. Um, you should be able to wrap that up in a week. Um, if you're having trouble with that, then you may need to spend a little bit more time on it. Um, and with the reading, um, we last week we learned the E, F and the G. This week what I want you to do, if, if you manage to do that, is to go on and learn the B, C and D exercises. Just keep moving through them. So B being the open string, C first finger, and D third finger. So it's really exactly the same. The pattern is the same. You're just playing the different notes. Remember to be using the every good boy deserves fruit and the face, F-A-C-E, to identify those notes. Really important. If you can keep working on that, then you'll really get that down. Okay, so let's, what we're going to do in the second part of this lesson, um, remember each of these lessons is broken into three, so the second part of this lesson we're going to look at oral, which is the ear training side of it, um, but just before you move on to that second video, what I want to do is just give you a little taste of what's about to come, and that is that um, we're going, I'm going to first get you to identify high notes from low notes, so in other words, that's a high note and that's a low note. Okay, so you, you're going to hear that's very obvious, and, and, and if, you, if you're unable to hear the difference between those two notes, um, then we've got a lot of work to do. But most people should be able to hear the difference between that being a high note and that being a low note. The difficulty comes when I'm, I've got two notes very close together, if I'm playing that note, 
followed by that note, then we, we're going to have a real problem. So I'll leave it there and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks, guys.